you for joining us. I'm Lauren, everyone, in case people at home don't know me. I'm Lauren Hillman with Theatrics Youth Theatre, and I'm here today with Adam Prue. Adam, can you tell us um, a little bit about what you do in the performing arts industry? What job do you have? Yeah, I, I have a lot of jobs in the performing arts industry. Um, I, uh, for the last three years, I've been what's called an assistant artistic director for a theatre called uh, the Victoria Playhouse Petrolia, which is in Ontario. Um, I'm an actor and uh, and I direct sometimes, uh, but the thing that probably most people know me for is I'm a puppeteer. So I build puppets and I perform puppets. As puppeteer, is that more about puppet making or the actual animation of moving of the puppets? Yeah, good question. I think puppeteer uh, would cover the animation of the puppet and then puppet builder is the, is the building part. And you don't need to do one to do the other. Um, I know I do both because when I started, uh, when I started writing my own shows and coming up with puppety ideas, uh, I knew that I needed to, I wouldn't be able to tell anybody what I wanted these puppets to look like properly, so I just had to learn to do it myself. Yeah, I understand. Uh, so Adam, this whole series is about inspiring kids uh, who are maybe interested in going into the performing arts in some way or another. And we're just trying to show them some different paths and different options that they might have. You obviously have had a very, um, I'm gonna say roundabout path because you have so many jobs uh, and had so many roles. So let's start at the beginning. What would you say was your first performing, performing experience um, that you found really memorable? Um, so like you, I'm from a town in Northern Ontario called Sault Ste. Marie and I started doing community theater when I was six. Um, when I was, I want to say four, my dad's a drummer, so he would play in the pit band, like the orchestra for musicals. And so he was playing for a Vita. And I have, one of my first memories is sitting on his shoulders in the orchestra pit while he drummed, which can't have been fun for him, right? Um, and that was, you know, when I was about four, then when I was about five or six, um, Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat happened, and I made my parents take me five times. <laughs> wow, I remember that show. So anyway, so I made them take me to the first one, and I saw it five times, and then at one point I remember coming down from bed, you know, late at night and saying, that I to my parents, I want to be in a play. And so they called up uh, my godmother, Maria Burgess, and she said, you want to be in a play? Great. Um, so, uh, come and audition for Fiddler on the Roof. So I went and I sang Dreidel, Dreidel, Dreidel in the back room of a Chinese restaurant. And next thing you know, I was in my first, my first musical. I, I mean, I, I think it was very cute. It was very small. So how, how would you describe your journey then from there, your first play, all the way to where you are today as a puppeteer and puppet builder? So, like you said, it's very roundabout. Usually when I'm telling the sort of origin story, I include Disney in there because that is where I learned my puppet skills without ever touching a puppet. Um, because when you're doing characters, it's a lot of the same sort of visual vocabulary, right? Like, like the character heads going up and down if you're saying yes, or side to side if you're giving a no, or like this question, leaning in to ask the question. Were you, you were know. you in a mascot costume at Disney mostly? Is that what you're referring to? Yeah. yeah, yeah, and so a lot of those skills and a lot of that training, and 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 they do have puppets there. So being able to watch all the entertainment and observe, I think, set me up really well. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Uh, do you have a second to actually bring out one of your puppets right now? I do. So I have Spencer here. Spencer is oh, terrifying. Spencer, I built a year and a half ago. He. Um, I built him for a show called Adam's Unplugged Puppet Party, which was a show at Victoria Playhouse. And um, uh, then when the quarantine started, I decided to make a show called Spencer Stays Inside. So this is Spencer. Ah. Hi, Spencer. <laughs> How you doing? Wow. I'm great. And you know what? It's great to meet you. I've been watching your shows for a while. You want to tell us about your show? I'm sorry? You want to tell us all about your show? There's a lot of kids. 
Yeah, okay, so so yeah, the show is called Spencer Stays Inside, and it goes every day at, at 7 o'clock, so that's 4 o'clock in the morning your time, so I, I hope you're not up then. So when you get up, it's on, and uh, and, and, and it's me, and, and I'm just in my favorite yellow room, and I talk about all kinds of things, but, but mostly I'm talking about things related to being inside because it's pretty weird right now and we all have to stay inside and, and spend a lot of time not with our friends or our family or at school. So it's all about that. I know and it's been really hard for some people. So I know it's been really nice getting to see you on TV every day. Let me ask you a, a question, Spencer. What is it mm -hmm. like with Adam? Oh boy. Well, <laughs> as you may be able to tell, I am an extrovert, whereas Adam back there is an introvert. <laughs> and so I like to talk and bounce around and have lots of beer cats. And Adam sometimes gets a little disturbed with me for having so much energy, perhaps. Ah, and then of you. Adam's a little bit more energy than he admits. Yes, I'm sure he is. Um, which one mm -hmm. is more in charge or writes each episode? Who does that? Ooh, um, well, we get episodes from all over the place, and a lot of them come from from emails from kids, uh, emails from who send ideas or questions, um, and, and then and then Adam will write some things down, and, and then he'll take me in front of the camera, and I just talk for a long time, and then he takes the video and he chops it up and makes it two minutes. Ooh. Um, now, a question for Adam. Mm -hmm is a very detailed and I have to say beautiful puppet. Uh, how did you make him? So there's a lot going on here. Um, where to begin? So most of the puppets, this is going to be terrifying, so just prepare yourself. We're going to look inside the puppet. Um, most of the puppets are built with upholstery foam. So it's this kind of foam, like if you're putting on a cushy chair right now, that's a and what you do is uh, you, you sort of come up with a pattern, which is a complicated process, but you come up with a pattern, cut it out, then glue it together. And that's how you get sort of the shape of the head. It's all just that foam. Um, and, and the arms are a little strip of foam, and the hands are foam with wire in them so that you can bend oh. you can like that. When you get to the head, um, what do we have here on Spencer? The, these are plastic, which I cast myself. So I make the plastic using like little silicone thing, like you'd use to make top cups or something. And they're two different sizes, which is one of my favorite things about them. It makes mm -hmm. them kind of huh? um, This is a different kind of foam, sort of similar to pool noodle, but I think it came like with an electronics, something that someone bought, um, just to sort of insulate it. This is craft foam that you get at the craft store. That, this is, uh, these are both felt. This fur, I just got um, at a fabric store. These are ostrich feathers. And then you take them and you, you make little bundles, like bundles of three or four. And then you have to like use a little tool to make a hole in the head and you glue them in and then they fall out and you put more in eventually. I think these are uh, beanie baby dolls. Um, oh, they totally are. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I see it. And yeah. like, um, before Spencer goes, the personality creating the, the character, would you have a process behind how, how Spencer came to be who he is? I do. This, um, I can't say who, but I sketched it off a friend of mine. Like, I looked at that friend and I was like, hmm. And I was like, what is it about that person that people find so endearing? And so, like, if you look at the, the puppet and you look at the friend, probably wouldn't maybe, but you might not be able to go, oh, oh, that looks like this person. Um, but what I'd like to do when I'm designing a puppet and I just sketch is like, what is the least amount of information, like the least amount of visual information I can give that gets that point in mind? And so a sensor that's definitely two different sized eyes, which is, you know, kind of gives them that like uncertain deer in the head look. It's got a wide nose and wide ears. And then, and then the hair is also important. But to be honest, when you put something like this, even if you're making a puppet out of a sock, when you put feathers or fur, it makes you look like you're a much better puppeteer than you are. Yeah, it has automatic movement, right? Yeah. 
So when in building, we will call that sympathetic movement. You move like all I do is one movement, but look at all the movement on top. Wow. So anyway, so, yeah. So I sketched up with my friend, and voice it's sort of as that person's voice and it evolved over time uh, into. Spencer is now, which is just sort of my voice, but like a little bit more compressed, just smaller and a little raspy. And um, that's Spencer. Well, I'm so glad Spencer was able to join us today. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs> what a sweetheart. He's a cutie. Yeah. So, Adam, before we go, do you have any advice for kids? who you think might be interested in going into puppeteering or puppet building in any way? You got in a very roundabout fashion. Is there maybe a more direct path for kids or just any advice you might have? Yeah, I mean, I think so. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I don't know if there's a direct way to any of this, be it performing or, or puppetry or any of that. I think, I mean, the lessons are just, uh, just got to do it. You know, it's different for everybody. Me, I'm a perfectionist. So for me, uh, my my go-to catchphrase lately has been better done than perfect. I know, I'm like you. I can spend a lot of time working on something and not want to show it to anyone until I think it's ready. And, but then it takes longer to get better because you don't get feedback. Well, that, and that's exactly it. And yeah, and not just feedback, just, you know, between, you know, on episode, I think 36 today or something, between episode one and 36, just the technical, aspect of it like the show looks so much better like when i look at episode one now i'm like oh my like what was i doing and that was only a month and a half ago but i never would have gotten the 36 had i not done one through 35 right yeah yeah no that's a great point adam and i hope all the kids at home really listen to that and take it to heart um and i just want to thank you again for having you here today uh do you have any last words before we go um be the weirdo that you are Mm-hmm.